So what is a fractal? A fractal is an object, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. Fractals are useful in modeling structures such as eroded coastlines or snowflakes, in which similar patterns reoccur at progressively smaller scales. And they're also useful in describing partly random or chaotic phenomena such as crystal growth, fluid turbulence, or, or even galaxy formation. The coastline of Great Britain is one example of a fractal. One unusual property of fractal coastlines is that their length is dependent on the scale of the measuring device. For instance, measuring the coastline using a kilometer length scale produces a result that is very different from a measurement that resolves down to the centimeter length scale. This is because the smaller scales account for more details of the coastline. Things like coves and jetties will be caught with smaller length scales, while only larger details will be caught with the larger scales. This results in a length for the coastline that is dependent on the length scale. It might be clear at this point that smaller length scales result in larger measurements for the coastline, length at least. In fact, if the coastline is infinitely detailed, decreasing the scale of measurement to an infinitesimal amount results in a divergent length. The question that motivates the subject of discussion is quite intimately related to this measurement paradox. Namely, given that the length of a coastline isn't a well-defined comp set, without at least a length scale, how can we measure averages along the coastline? For example, what is the average temperature along the coastline of Great Britain? Although the length of the coastline diverges as the length scale decreases, the temperature of the coastline clearly does not follow a similar pattern. Recalling how one finds averages, specifically the formula for the mean of a da data set, the idea of integrating along the coastline to find the mean temperature comes to mind. However, looking at the traditional formula for the mean of a quantity with respect to a data set does not instill much hope. We already know that the length of the coastline isn't a well-defined concept at the infinitesimal scale. We need a better definition of the integral if we hope to find the answer to our question. In fact, the weighted mean is our answer. If the differential is constant, then this reduces to the standard definition of the mean. If we put a quantity we want the average of inside the integral, we obtain its mean value after integration. Here is a real life example. Many teachers will give out course grades giving different assignments different weight in the final grade. The formula here is analogous to the formula used to calculate your grade. However, now we have an infinite number of assignments, each with the weight assigned. In other words, each assignment is given a weight or measure to be used in calculating averages. Let's look at an example. We take the closed set of the reals from 0 to 1 to be our data set. We can then clearly see that the measurement is constant for the set and that the integral is equal to 1. It's also possible to display this graphically in a step-by-step -step fashion. We break the set down into pieces in a progressive fashion and assign measures or weights to each piece. As the number of pieces becomes infinite, the discrete approximation of the measure becomes exact. I encourage you to mentally verify that, e that at each step the discrete measures can be added up to unity. It's also fun to note that the construction of the measure can be done recursively by creating a rule that takes a piece of the set and its measure breaks it into more pieces and assigns a new measure for the pieces based on the original piece's measure. In other words, we can recursively define our measure, just as we can recursively create fractals. Although we won't be expanding upon this any further in this discussion, the possibility for exotic measure assignments should be kept in mind. So summarizing, we see that the average of a function f over a set c is equal to the integral of the function over the set with respect to its measure. Now, let's look at an actual fractal. The Cantor set can be constructed through a recursive process where we take a set and remove the middle third. We repeat this process on the two smaller sets and repeat. After an infinite number of iterations, the resulting set is a fractal. We can also assign a uniform measure to this fractal set by taking advantage of the construction process. The first step is mostly trivial. We need the measure to add up to 1, so we just assign 1 to the single piece. 
In the second step, we assign the value of a half for the measure. We can then continue this process indefinitely until construction is complete. I encourage the viewer to once again check that the sum of the measures at each step stays constant. What do you think would happen if this weren't the case? Would the construction process for the measure be well defined? So now we have all the tools we need to integrate over a fractal, except it's not entirely clear how we'll be able to do this. The insight is to remember that fractals are self-similar. In this example, the Cantor set, the self-similarity is exact, so if we can find a way to rewrite the integral in terms of its parts, we'll be able to repeat the process and get an answer out for the integral. Hopefully it's clear then that we should rewrite the integral over the Cantor set in terms of an integral over smaller Cantor sets. Since one of the smaller Cantor sets starts two-thirds of the way on the unit line, we need to start evaluating the function from this point rather than from zero. Doing this and simplifying yields the original integral in terms of an integral of a smaller Cantor set and a constant factor. We can then express this new integral in terms of even smaller Cantor sets. And then simplifying yields a new expression. Continuing this process, we obtain a summation. The first term can be evaluated since the integration set is so small. As n goes to infinity, the only value that x takes on the interval will be zero. Thus, it can be factored out of the set. We know what the measure for a self-similar piece of Cantor set is, so we can cancel the two to the n term and then multiply by zero. The other terms can be simplified similarly. We obtain a geometric series that can be evaluated exactly to a half as n approaches infinity. Thus, the average value of the function x over the unit Cantor set is one half. I've put some further reading and viewing resources in the description, since this was obviously neither a formal nor comprehensive introduction to the subject. Hopefully the video was helpful, and I look forward to making some more about this exotic subject.